All right, we're recording. I'm gonna do the clap. Let's take three. Three, two, one. Hey YouTube, it's been a long time. I think I'm gonna try making another video. This time, I'm gonna explain how to do a few down low on the cheap uh, MacGyver welfare mods to your Caltech Sub 2000. This is kind of senseless, first of all, because if you have a laptop, it'll fit in your laptop bag, so you can save yourself 15 bucks right away. And this is not a Sub 2000 case from Caltech, it's I think case KSG case from Caltech. Uh, don't quote me on that either, not sure, I can't remember which it is. But this is my Generation 1 Sub 2000. Uh, put these away for now. Oops. Let's open her up and make sure it's safe. It was safe when it was folded. Yep, it's empty. All right. So what I'm trying to do here, and what I did try to do here, and what I did do here, was make it so that I could use one of these bad boys, which I got from Amazon or eBay for $15. Yeah, it's a lot because I'm in Canada. Everything's more in Canada. Uh, but still very cheap. Cheaper than buying a, you know, a Red Lion or a Caltech aluminum forend. But I didn't want to cut my original forend, so uh, I got a second one from Caltech. Back then they were still $16. Now I think they're $35 US. Uh, that's not a very good deal for us Canadians anymore. But I wanted to cut this window so that I could fit this in there so that I could install a red dot or a flashlight or whatever I wanted onto a 45 degree mount. I could have and could have got a quick quick detach, but I didn't. So first thing you want to do is measure where your ribs are not going to be because you can't cut your window, I'll we'll call this a window, where the ribs are. Oh, just another, first of all, sorry, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Uh, I did take my Dremel with a sanding drum like this, and I went in and free floated. <laughs> I mean, it was rubbing, squishing pretty hard on the barrel, so why not? I did that, I used some chunk of standard one and three quarters to two and a quarter, uh, I guess it fits a few sizes, bicycle inner tube for the grip sleeve, and some electrical heat shrink, uh, the trigger has some sharp corners on it, I didn't want to sand it, if I go to sell this thing I want it to be as pristine as possible. And excuse my mumbling and fast talking, I will try to stop that right now. Uh, what else? Oh, the uh, buffer tube cover, another Welfare MacGyver thing. I used some toolbox drawer liner that's kind of rubberized and some Gorilla Tape. It's not for the cushion, it's mostly to keep the... When it's minus 40 in Canada and you put something metal on your face, doesn't feel real well, so feel very good. Those are my uh, other welfare mounts. Oh, use the zip tie for a <laughs> sling mount. Yay! So what I had to do was measure, get a rough measurement of. I wanted mine as far forward as possible. So. From that rib to the back of the stock is approximately nine and a half inches right there. Um, so I wanted to stay less than nine and a half inches away from the back to start my hole, which I started, I believe, with the Dremel and one of these sort of end mill bits, or router bits, or drill bits, and of course stayed away from you know the actual size and location uh, because 
when you start your hole, you want to make it smaller than it's going to be just to make sure you have a nice... I mean, this isn't even a real nice job, but compared to where when you start, it's really ugly at first. Um, so yeah, you want to stay smaller than... Smaller than that it's going to be, which is about an inch and a half long. And taller than that's going to be, which is about seven eighths, a little less. So you're gonna, I used masking tape, which was, I guess, okay for marking and laying out. Yeah, what the heck. Um, then I drilled my holes a little smaller than I had to, and I got on eBay, I think, for pennies each, some of these stainless little saw blades. I don't know if you can see those. Very cheap, very effective for cutting plastic and polymer. Um, you know, the cutting discs, the grinding discs work well too, but they tend to melt the plastic a little bit more than cut it. This is a grinding cutting wheel on there now. So I went ahead and got Close to the size, I mounted, let's take this off right now, I mounted the, the mount onto the barrel, something like so, with just one or two screws temporarily. It's just like cutting that hole. You, you never do something all the way at first. You just do it part way and then you come back and finish it up later. And of course I put that on upside down for you. That's how I roll. It matters not though because this is going to be on the top. I'm just going to leave it. So you put that on the barrel somewhere along the bigger diameter and then you start trying to fit. And I was critical of everybody else on YouTube that used this method because everybody's holes were so much they were about the same size as the rail section and I was thinking you can get away with doing it a lot smaller and just rock it on after it doesn't have to be the whole size I was wrong it does have to and so that's as big as I wound up making them which is as big as they wound up having to be made and of course wants to cooperate when you're on TV. Oops. Boom. So that tightens up and now all the way? No, of course not. Sorry everybody. There we go. Now we're on all the way. Uh, you tighten your screws. That was another thing. Uh, I do all my screws from the left, taking them out, putting them in from the left. Seems like usually that's the way tapered pins are installed in rifles and firearms. Um, I believe these bushings would stay on whichever side you didn't undo, but whatever side you do, stick with that side, I think is what you should be doing. I take mine out on the left side just because it seems to be the way most do it. Oops, forgot to put that in. It goes in earlier. So once you get that installed and everything tight as a drum, then you are able to spill your coffee. And now this I'm putting on backwards because it's on this mount for a different rail, which is oriented in a different location and facing a different way on the rifle that it goes on. So, let me just get it on just to show what it is that I do. I'm left-handed when I shoot, that's why it seems like it's on the wrong side. A quick detach would, yeah, be a lot easier. And so I've got my red dot. Uh, whether I want to put a flashlight, I could put a flashlight on the other side. Uh, vertical or angled for grip, and so then us lefties have to, with semi-autos that aren't ambidextrous, we have to be careful of the ejection port. And uh, But this is a handy, nice, cheap way to do this. I did it the expensive way. I bought a new 
$16 US, back then the exchange rate was fine, um, foreign, and I butchered that one and left the stock one alone. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, for probably well under 50 bucks, I got the barrel clamp mount, <laughs> all the uh, grip sleeves and tactical buffer tube sleeves and the trigger sleeve. Um, if you're like me on a budget, there are a lot of ways, a lot of ways to skin a cat and make it for supper for that book. Um, originally, I went and bought a coping saw. I figured this was what I was going to use to do pretty much the whole job. Didn't bother using it. I'll use it another time. It came with six blades or something, and it was like nine ninety nine. Um, so there you go. There you have it. Keltec Sub Two Thousand with the red dot on the cheap. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars. Uh, stick around because I've got a couple more Sub uh, Sub Two Thousand modification videos coming right up. Thanks for watching, everybody.